Hey guys, so we are going to start looking at Nova LCT and the VCAN software and I'll walk you through simple steps of how to program a small screen and how we can actually deliver content to it using a VCAN software which is one of the newer softwares for all-in-one controllers such as Nova Pro Ultra HD series as well as the VX series and I'm sure you guys are familiar with the VX6S, VX4S Nova Pro Ultra HD Junior, which is a 4K version of the scale uh, with a built-in scaler and multiple pips, and we'll run you through all of that. So we're gonna go ahead and launch our. Nova LCT and this is the screen we're going to program so once you launch your Nova LCT version 5.3.0 in this case uh, first thing we're going to do is log in under user advanced uh, logging and that password is admin by default once you're in you should see your control system numbers right here it was showing one in my case then you have uh, IP address of the processor, Nova Pro Ultra HD Junior. We are going to go into screen configuration, select the IP address, click next. Set this processor as a primary. Okay. We're going to go here and we're going to load file. And once we load the file, we know that this is 128 by 256 panels. So I'm going to click reset all. We are 28 panels wide by 5 panels tall. We're 128 wide by 256 pixels tall per cabinet. Port 1 starts right here. It goes in 14 panels. And you can drag it with the mouse or you can use your keyboard to go and keep clicking next until you have to stop according to your map if you go one too many or if you go a different route you can just right click to get rid of that and there we go I have my mapping file the first thing I want to do is gonna do save to file and I'm going to go ahead and call this Atlanta 3.9 millimeter screen. Save. Okay, and then I'm going to send it to hardware. Now this is going to send it to the processor itself. And it saves the mapping file in the processor. So unless if you reset the processor, you're never going to have to resend this again. If you do reset your processor for whatever reason, you would have to resend this file. It does take a few seconds for it to send. Once it sends, you can see the resolution of your screen being 3584 by 1280 in front of the processor. Go ahead and click save just to be sure again. Okay. And we can go ahead and close out of this program now. Are you sure? Yes. But once you close out of that program, wait for a few seconds before launching VCAN software. You don't want to run both softwares at the same time as they use the same port socket on the network. So once we start the VCAN, it's going to start syncing the data. Give it a few seconds. It might take up to a couple of minutes, sometimes if you have too many processors. Uh, as soon as done syncing data, we'll see here. If it does not show up with this dialog right away. All right. So now that we're in sync, if not, you can go into systems and do connect or sync. And that way it'll 
start connecting to the device and then it will sync up all the data between the laptop or a computer with the processor itself. So once you have done this, uh, first thing I want to do is add a background picture. So th that's in the OSD right here, I got a background. I can just click on that background and it will just load it on the screen itself. You can see that just changed to green. I'm going to go ahead and add a picture here. So I have a pixel perfect image. So the backgrounds have to be pixel perfect accurate to your LED screen. Otherwise it's just going to stretch it. And let's look at one on my desktop here. Go ahead and click apply. And that's all it really takes. There we go. As soon as it's done, you can see it's loaded up in the output monitor here. I'm going to go ahead and close this layer out so you can see. So now that this image is loaded up exactly pixel to pixel, I am actually going to leave it here because this is my pixel map for this particular project that I'm working on. When they fire up the processor, this is what they're going to see. And that would help us build the screen make sure it's being programmed correctly, make sure it's being wired correctly. Uh, I have two layers here, so let's say if I wanted to set HDMI as my live video layer. So once I drag it in here, you can see it's layer one. You can right click on the layer itself here somewhere. You can do switch source. If you want to bring it front, send it back. Uh, bring forward, send backwards. You can lock the layer so you can't make any changes to it. You can close all current layers or close this layer. I'm not going to do any of that except right here you have full screen mode, full mosaic area, pixel to pixel, and lock. So if I was to do pixel to pixel it will just fill it up as you can see in the output window. I'm going to go ahead and drag that over and I'm going to do full screen. And full screen what it does completely squeezes up my image into that tiny little screen area it doesn't matter what size it is it'll just show full screen of whatever i'm outputting on the led wall and that's usually not a good idea because it's going to mess up your aspect ratio so i'm going to keep it pixel to pixel for our, our demonstration mode then you have i'm going to bring in sdi input as a picture on picture so i have a camera just sitting here uh, I'm going to wave in front of the camera, so this is just an SDI camera that I've connected up to it. Now this obviously you do want to keep it in uh, proper aspect ratio as well. So again I'm not going to do f uh, full screen but I will do pixel to pixel and it is 1920 by 1080 camera. So as you can see it's just going to stay in the area I put it in. So if I wanted to do a center cut on this or center fill on the screen, I can literally take it in the front while holding down the shift, you can enlarge the image and now that's turned into a center. So they do have little snaps uh, so it's really easy to get it. If not, you can always just go ahead and type in the exact number of pixels that you would like to have this at. Um, another thing you could do is if you even wanted to bring a pip on top of it or sorry so since we have a background layer it is not going to let us do a third layer so if i kill the background layer There seems to be some glitch that's not allowing me to do layer 3 from the software. However, I was able to do it through the processor. So again, if layers are where they needed to be, you could rearrange them, set them wherever you like. Um, you can change the sources on them. You can freely control them to scale however you like. So I'm going to go back to pixel to pixel and maintain the aspect ratios, shrink it. And 
And then on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to HDMI. So as you can see, you can see my full screen on there, um, on top layer as well. If you had another input, obviously we could do it. Uh, there is a ways to save presets now. So let's look at that. Presets, so I'm gonna clear all first since they were saved from before. Okay, so if you just right click on it and save, it will save whatever is on your screen right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and close one of the layers out, save another one, close another layer out, save another one. And as you can see, if I click on layer one or preset one, it brought all three windows back. Preset two was two windows, preset three was one window, and they're all working flawlessly. Uh, even if you had one of the presets and let's just say you had a different positions for the pips. And we're gonna shrink this one up as well. So I'm gonna change this source to SDI. We're gonna save this on number four. So now that's what we have on number four. You can also copy this uh, preset and save it to some other one by copy pasting. So you don't lose it if you overwrite preset four, but for any reason, you still have a preset 10 as your backup. And all you have to do is just click on it to load those presets. Then click OK and that's it. Uh, you do have some transition effects if you really wanted to use transitions. Uh, you have some uh, timing to transfer from one to the next for that transition. Uh, sync mode, you can select if it's gen lock or HDMI or whatever. Normally this is not really needed. HDR, if you're using HDR content, obviously click on it. It'll give you all the HDR menu there. Then another thing I wanted to show you was auto fit is a great feature. So you can just select a layer, do an auto fit, it'll fill the full screen. And then you have one click restore, which completely just clears out everything and then just brings all the layers down to a workable space. You also have a freeze option here, freeze program. You can do self test and you can see my output screens are changing to whatever we select. I like to have uh, lines usually is my like this cross hatch is my personal favorite to use as a test pattern as you're troubleshooting something. Then now if you wanted to get rid of the test patterns you have to click on that and then go to normal close if you wanted to do a blackout from the processor itself this is where the blackout is and then go back to normal once you're done you can check the firmware from here it's already on the most current firmware so it's not gonna uh, update anything but you can browse the firmware if you have a firmware file and just click uh, update down here and that will be it and that's it for this tutorial guys